Greetings, friend. This is a classic Sudoku puzzle submitted by Howard Elder to crack into cryptic to solve. Howard had been stuck on the puzzle for over a year. He wanted to see a solution that did not include bifurcating. Mark Goodliffe solved it in a video released on February 24th, 2020. I'll put the link to the original video below. The title of the video suggests that Mark used at least one XYZ wing to solve this puzzle. So here I have the puzzle here. I already showed the candidates to kind of help with the uh, analysis. And Mark started out with some simple cross hatching to find some hidden and naked singles and naked pairs. So what he noticed is there's a three in row two, column four, there's the only three here in block two. And then another three in row one, column three. And then he noticed there's a five eight pair, so he marked that five eight pair up there in row one. And so I'll remove all these fives and eights. And then you notice there's a 7 in row 5, column 4. If you notice this is a 3-4 matching pair, that had to be a 7. And then after marking that 7, he then noticed that this 3-4 made it such that uh, there's a naked single 1 right here in block 8. And Mark made a comment at the time. He's like, I know some people wonder how do I find these naked singles so quick because he didn't have all these candidates showing. And what he said was he looked for a restricted uh, column. In this case, this one had the 3 and a 4 taking the 5, 7, 8, 9. So he knew he needed a 1, 2, and 6. He looked across. And if you just look straight down the column, he looked across. He saw a 1 right here. And so he knew that was 2, 6. Then he saw... Uh, that there was nothing in the bottom row, but then if you if you're look staring at this cell, the one, and you look over to the left, your peripheral, you can see a two and a six. So he knew that had to be a one. At this point, Mark started using some Snyder notation. That's a technique where you mark in blocks where a particular candidate can be in only two possible cells. Uh, using that, he found that there's a one over here in row eight, column nine. That's a hidden single. And then he noticed a 2-6 hidden pair. So what I'm going to do right now is have you pause the video, take a few seconds, and see if you can find the 2-6 hidden pair. Okay, congratulations if you spotted it. For those of you who just want to enjoy the show, the 2-6 hidden pair is in here in block 9. And the re way Mark found it is that this 2 and 6 he saw came right across row 7. So that meant that the 2 and the 6 had to be in these two spots. From there, he just quickly realized, uh, using this 3, that this had to be a 3, and then that was a 5. Then he started scanning the 4s across row 7. He saw this was a restricted row with only 3 cans remaining. He noticed the 4s were confined here to... Uh, block 8. So that makes it a claiming pair. And so when you have a claiming pair like this, you can remove this 4 because the 4s have to be up here and one of them has to be up there in row 7. And by doing that, Mark noticed then that there's only one 4 uh, possible down here in row 9. It had to be right here in row 9, column 3. So he marked that as a 4. And then he knew uh, from his previous markings, you see with these two 1s, that this had to be a 1. After that, he scanned up and he noticed uh, a 5 in row 9, column 4. So he scanned across and he noticed that there's a 5 here and a 5 here. So there's only one place left for a 5 in row 9. So at this point in the puzzle, where Mark started to search for more advanced strategies. And this is actually kind of neat and shows, like, the instinct that Mark has. So he noticed along column two, he started focusing here on column two, he noticed that there's a seven and five playing in to this column, but there's also a seven and five down here in block seven. And so he notices that the seven and the five is limited to just two spots in column two. So how about you pause the video for a couple seconds and I see if you can find where the five and the sevens are limited, what two spots. Okay, for those of you that are able to find it, congratulations. And those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's up here 
in row three, column two, and row six, column two. So you'll notice that these are the only two spots where you see a five and a seven. There's no five, seven here, here, or here. And from that, Mark noticed that since this could not be an eight, there's only one place left for an eight in block one, and that's right there. Now, at this point in the puzzle, you're gonna need some real advanced strategies to, to move forward. Uh, Mark got kind of stuck, and he started to resort to bifurcate, but then remembered what he promised Howard, that he wouldn't bifurcate. But he started focusing here in block four, and then he found X, Y, Z wing. He called it X, Y, Z wing. So I tell you right now, uh, he was using block four and across row six. So how about uh, my third and final pause the video moment and see if you can find the X, Y, Z wing that Mark found. I'll give you a few seconds. Okay, congratulations if you spotted it. For those of you who just want to enjoy the show, the X, Y, Z wing is right here. Here's your pivot, and here are your two pinchers. So an XYZ wing, a little different than an XY wing. Three candidates, in this case two, seven, and eight. One's a pivot, which you can see the other two, and then the other two are called pinchers in the purple. And so you notice is that the pivot in an XYZ wing has to contain all three candidates. So the two, the seven, eight are all right here. You also notice that at least one of the candidates, the seven, is shared in all three of these cells. And what you can do is you can eliminate a seven in any cell that sees all three of these cells. So in these two spots, row seven, you'd be able to eliminate the seven. And the reason it works is uh, you can validate it by just plugging in the three uh, solutions to the pivot cell. So if you put in a two right here, you'd notice that this is a seven and that can't, none of these could be a seven. If you put a seven right here, none of these could be a seven. If you put an eight right here, you notice this is a seven and none of these could be a seven. So that's how an X, Y, Z wing works. But if you can quickly just see, oh, here's my pivot, here are my two pinchers, and they have to be two different by value cells. So a seven, eight here and a two, seven there. They can't both be seven, eight, it doesn't work. And then you know, okay, well, anywhere I see a seven, with this seven, I can eliminate. And so Mark was able to eliminate that seven right there. So Mark knew to look right here. And it's pretty amazing that where his instinct was. Uh, and I can tell you that in this position with 38 cells remaining, Mark had actually cracked the puzzle. And by cracked is you'll see, and I'll show you, it's hit, it's uh, hidden naked and singles all the way to the end. And if you're wondering, hey, if he didn't find this XYZ wing, could you still solve the puzzle? The answer is yes but it's a lot more complicated. You have a lot more intermediate steps. You'd, you'd work with this two six and kind of eliminate up column seven. And then over here, you can create some by value cells. And I had to use like three X, Y chains uh, to solve this without using this uh, X, Y, Z wing. And it was a lot more complicated and it took a little bit longer to solve. So, like I said, he cracked the puzzle. So I wanna show you that right now. So that's a five. Here's a seven, here's a one, here's a five. And Mark noticed too that the puzzle got you know, much simpler when you get to this point. Six, seven, six, seven means this has to be a two, six, four, five, and I won't knock it out, but you know, every cell I go to that has just one candidate remaining, those are all gonna be naked singles. So the name of the puzzle, Mark said, you know, instinct versus technique. You can tell Mark's instinct is pretty right on. And when he bifurcates, and he's explained this, basically he'll go to a point in the puzzle where the normal techniques don't work anymore. And then he looks for a cell where there's just two possible candidates remaining. And he kind of says, okay, if I eliminate one of these, can I make some more deductions? And if he doesn't, uh, you know, if it gets to a point where he breaks the puzzle, then he just goes back and chooses the other candidate. And so that's how you bifurcate. Uh, it's a form of guessing. You really don't know which one's the right one. Where you and an X Y, Z wing, you can know with certainty which candidates you can eliminate uh, logically. So how'd you do in the pause the video moments? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're at it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Smart Hobbies. 
so you don't miss any new content. In the meantime, please check out these other videos from my channel. Thank you so much for watching.